Great. So uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you very much for all the speakers and uh, audience for attending this second edition of the uh, virtual uh, workshop uh, for junior researcher in time series. Uh, uh, time series. So welcome, everyone. And uh, so I'm going to be sharing the first session with uh, my uh, friend and colleague Adriana here. And so every uh, speaker will have uh, 20 minutes, including uh, the questions. So uh, so the questions, you, I mean, we will allow maybe for one or two questions, given that the, the you know, the, the, the time is very limited. And then you may, you know, ask the question directly or, uh, you know, post it in the chat. And also, we, you know, if you have, uh, you know, more interest in the paper, you may be, uh, you know, you may contact the the the, the authors directly and uh, you know uh, ask, uh, you know ask your questions so i'm going to uh, uh, ask adriana to uh, share the first uh, the first paper and then i will be sharing the rest thank you very much so hello everyone so the first speaker is martin Pankhauser from bocconi university and he will present a paper on conformal quantile estimation in economics um, so, hi, um, my name is Martin. I'm a third year PhD student in uh, at Bocconi University. Um, and first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me. I'm, I'm a big fan of this uh, seminar series, so it's nice to, to be part of it. My paper is called Conformal Quantile Estimation in Economics. And the, the basic idea is a simple one. So like in a, in a lot of uh, economic forecasting problems, obtaining good point predictors is relatively easy meaning that even simple models can produce quite accurate point uh, predictors in a, in a mean squared error sense. But producing like accurate quantile forecasts or density forecasts requires more complex modeling, for example, like modeling higher order moments in stochastic volatility models, which is making them slow because you have a lot of like new latent parameters to be estimated. Or you can directly model quantiles within quantile regressions. However, there you have the problem that uh, you might have uh, like quantiles which cross or if you move to multiple quantile models, um, they also tend to be like computational, quite uh, complex. So the idea is, or like the question is, can we use like the simple point predictors we, we get from like accurate but fast point, like uh, models for the mean, um, and can we transform them into good quantile predictions? And the answer is yes, by, by using like one-sided conformal predictors um, as quantile estimators. To preview the results, so I, I apply my method to two empirical examples. The first one is related to um, now casting US GDP, so the 5% quantile of uh, US GDP growth. Uh, and what you can see here is like a real-time exercise um, from 1989 to like 2019. And in blue is my method. And in black is the Bayesian mixed frequency model with stochastic volatility, which is kind of one of the best partial modeling uh, now casting approaches out there. And what I would like you to take away from this graph is kind of, I will show this in, 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 in numbers later, um, but the results are quite similar. However, like the, the blue line, which is kind of like conformalizing this Midas approach um, is, is estimated within minutes, whereas the black line, it takes like uh, even several hours to, to conduct this real-time exercise. So it's a fast alternative in this case in a second empirical example, I cannot describe uh, within these 20 minutes for, for time reasons. Um, but just to give you like the, the overview of the results, I uh, replicate the empirical analysis of Catania and Duati, um, which are interested in like uh, forecasting the one step ahead percentiles of, uh, of the Microsoft Stock Corporation. Um, and I show that my method uh, performs like similar to like this dynamic multiple quantile model they propose in the in the same paper published in Journal of Econometrics. In general, like what I'm contributing to, so um, first of all, I'm contributing to the conformal prediction li literature in the sense that I am the first using, um, the best of my knowledge, I'm the first using these ideas from one-sided conformal prediction um, to construct quantile estimators, because usually what you what conformal predictors are doing is like constructing prediction intervals around like point forecasts. Second, I contribute to this too, like in my empirical applications, I show that for now casting and multiple quantile estimation, as I hinted, 
I have a fast alternative to the best performing uh, or one of the best performing models in the respective cases. And last but not least, I think an important contribution is uh, the comparison to the bootstrap um, with conformal prediction, like my conformal quantile estimator in a time series context. In particular, I will show results in simulations and for the, for the now casting example, where I show that the bootstrap has some issues with high, dim high dimensional problems, whereas like the conformal predictor seems to work well, uh, regardless of the dimensionality of the, of the point predictor. And this is like contributing to a literature. Uh, for example, um, this paper by Wang and Politis is also comparing different kinds of conformal predictors with the bootstrap. Um, however, not in this um, uh, not in this time series context I'm considering, and not in these high dimensional problems. Okay, what I'm doing, like uh, let's discuss briefly the the theory behind this. So for this talk, I will um, only show results for or like the theory only for the exchangeable case, uh, meaning in a special case IID data. Um, however, everything I'm saying holds approximately if we move to more general dependence patterns in the data, so non-exchangeable data, um, but beta mixing processes. Um, like uh, every result I'm, I'm presenting holds approximately. So the basic task is like we, we observe data, y and x, a sample of size t. And we want to predict yt plus 1 given the regressor xt plus 1. So xt plus 1 is observed in the current period. And say you have a model like some point predictor um, producing our like mean predictions, um, which could be anything. So like the algorithm I'm proposing next will be agnostic about this. So it could be autoregressive model. It could be a Midas model. Like actually, I'm using a Midas model in the now casting example. Or it could be something more complex like a neural net. Um, the general approach is the following. So um, we consider proposal values. So a finite grid of proposal values for this yt plus one value we want to forecast, uh, which I denote here by little y. And then we augment the data. So um, we consider like the augmented data consists of the t data points we observe, plus the t plus one data point, which consists of the regressor we observe, and the conjectured value um, we just uh, imposed, no, we just conjectured. Um, then importantly, we use this augmented data to fit the point predictor and obtain some conformity scores, which in our case, this is also crucial, will be just the residuals. So not, a, uh, not the absolute value, uh, it is just the signed residuals as they come out from the point prediction. And with these conformity scores, we can calculate the p-value which gives us kind of a, uh, how likely or how uncommon this t plus one conformity score is uh, in relation to all the other conformity scores. And this t plus one conformity score uh, is associated to our conjectured value. And then like uh, this is a valid p-value, so by uh, a classic test inversion argument, we can construct our prediction interval, uh, our one minus alpha prediction interval by inverting this and uh, kind of just retaining the proposal values, which deliver a p-value higher than the pre-specified um, significance level. The nice thing about this algorithm is that um, following like standard arguments in the literature, we can bound the probability that the next data point, the yt plus one data point, lies within this prediction interval from one, with one minus alpha from below and one minus alpha plus one over t plus one from above. And crucially, by the, the specific choice of the conformity score as the residuals, as opposed to the absolute value of the residuals, our prediction interval has this right open form. So we have a lower bound and it goes to infinity. So if we take the complement of this probability, we get that the CDF evaluated at this lower bound is in between one minus alpha, uh, alpha minus one over t plus one and alpha. So if t goes to infinity, this will approach like uh, the true quantile of the, of the distribution, kind of uh, justifying the usage of this kind of machinery uh, as quantile predictor. I, I wrote this down and I applied it and it worked very well. And I thought it's, uh, it's, it's a completely new idea. This is not true. So one side of conformal prediction goes back to Linus and Johansson and Lefström. Um, However, what the literature is doing, like they use this procedure to like strengthen the coverage guarantees of prediction intervals. So the basic idea is that if you have a one minus alpha prediction interval, 
um, like a valid one or minus alpha prediction to that, then you are guaranteed that you the the new new label, the new point is included in this prediction interval one minus alpha percent of, percentage of the time, which does not imply that uh, you have missed coverage rate alpha half above and alpha half below of the interval. So what they are doing is kind of saying, you can use two one-sided intervals and take the intersection to have these stronger coverage guarantees. This is only applied in Romano Peterson to strengthen the coverage guarantees um, because the problem is that it also widens the prediction interval which is for like the purpose of quantile estimation, uh, not of uh, first order uh, importance. And uh, the second paper using this idea of Wang and qualities, which use it directly for conjecture testing. So I'm the first taking this seriously as, as quantile uh, forecast, and uh, I show that, uh, that this works quite well. A last, uh, a last thing before we move to the simulations and to the, um, to the simulations and to, uh, the empirical examples, I promised you like a, a, a fast um, method to uh, obtain quantile estimates out of point predictions. However, like if you look at the algorithm, it requires us to refit the point predictor for each proposal value, which is not even feasible for like a continuous outcome because you have infinite proposals. So in practice, what is applied is like a split conformal variant of this, uh, where the basic idea is that you split your data into training and calibration data sets. So you, you train your point predictor on the training set, and then you obtain the uh, conformity scores uh, on the calibration data. And then you use this bag of conformity scores to, to construct your, your prediction interval, or in my case, my quantile estimator. Um, by the nature of the now casting problem and the multiple quantile problem um, shown later, I will like collect uh, sequentially the one step ahead out of sample errors um, and use them to construct my quantile estimator. But this is a, like only a special case of the full conformal algorithm I was just describing. So the theory works nevertheless. Um, and I will, I will refer to this approach as CP1, um, just to be uh, brief on notation. Okay, like the, the first uh, question you, you might think of is kind of how, how does this relate to the bootstrap? And bootstrapping, like we have a natural competitor like for autoregressive models, uh, which is the predictive bootstrap of Bahn and Politis um, uh, proposed in 2016. So the predictive, the forward bootstrap using predictive uh, residuals. And in this first simulation, I simulate from a like autoregressive model with standard normal errors for different sample sizes, 50, 100, and 200. And um, for each of these sample sizes, I fit the model. I produce the quantile um, estimator for the 5% quantile. So the nominal level is 5%. And then I simulate a thousand. Um, so within each simulation, I simulate a thousand um, future values, and I report the a fraction of these values falling below the quantum. And what you can see here for this correctly specified case, as reported also in other papers, conformal prediction has some problems with very small sample sizes. However, if we move, like if we increase the the, the number of samples, uh, it works similar to the bootstrap. However, if we change this slightly, so if we consider our autoregressive model, but now we fix the sample size to 100 and we add additional regressors, so we increase the dimensionality of the prediction problem, um, then we see that whereas the conformal predictor, CP1, in the first line still has empirical coverage, like conditional coverage, close to the nominal level, um, the forward bootstrap of Bahn and Politis um, is breaking down uh, the more regressors we include. This is a feature which is also like um, appearing in the first example. So if we look at now casting, uh, GDP tail risk, I, I don't think I have to introduce the, what now casting is to this audience just to, to fix the, uh, the ideas. So I'm forecasting, uh, I'm now casting US quarterly GDP, so the 5% quantile of US quarterly GDP using monthly and weekly data, uh, following the specification in Cagliero, Clark, and Marcellino, which do kind of this horse race comparison between different partial model um, now casting approaches. And then I will mostly compare with the Bayesian mixed frequency model with stochastic volatility, because this was shown by, by the aforementioned authors to uh, be one of the best models in terms of quantile forecasts. What this table is showing you is like uh, the results 
um, associated to the graph I showed you at the introduction. Um, all of the results are out of sample. Um, so we have the basic mixed frequency model. We have the conformal prediction algorithm I, I just uh, described to you using a MIDAS model um, as point predictor. Specifically, this is a MIDAS model, including many um, high frequency regressors simultaneously. And it's estimated via parameter profiling by restricting the, polynom the, the parameters of the polynomial to be the same across uh, regressors. And last but not least, the booster procedure is applied to the same MIDAS model. Um, and I follow the procedure of Asphalt for and Raffert Solder in the Schoenlauf applied economics. And what you can see here is that the Bayesian model and the conformal quantile estimator are working quite well. I, I never reject the null of uh, the, MPA, the coverage being equal to the 5%. Uh, whereas the bootstrap, as in the simulation, seems to suffer from uh, this high dimensionality of the problem. The same is true for the quantile loss, um, which is in some sense also more interesting because the conformal predictor is kind of made to, to target the correct coverage, but it works also for like uh, the quantile loss. Um, what, you show, what you can see here is again for the same weeks, so you haven't said it before, it's for week 1, 5, 9, 13, 15, but it's the same also for the others. Um, what you can see here is like the value for the basin mixed frequency model with stochastic volatility and the relative value for the other two. So value smaller than one means a lower quantile loss uh, than the Bayesian mixed frequency model in this um, specific week. And as you can see, um, the conformal predictor seems to work even better. However, the, um, the differences are not statistically significant. Um, however, it's like it's, uh, the point predictor, seems, like the, the, the loss seems to be a, a bit lower. Uh, whereas again, the bootstrap uh, kind of breaks down uh, as a result of the dimensionality of the problem. Um, to conclude, so the idea of this paper is to provide a fast and accurate alternative to existing quantile forecasting methods. So I think this could be very attractive for like real-time exercises uh, in economic institutions because it's just very fast and, and it seems to work well for multiple like different applications. Um, I think one important point is that I show empirically and in simulation that it's quite attractive, uh, a quite attractive alternative to the bootstrap. Again, like um, also here, like the conformal predictor is way faster now because other than for the bootstrap, where I have to fit the model like uh, B bootstrap replications of times, I don't, I don't have to refit the model. Um, and it works quite well for realistic samples and for high dimensional problems. Um, so. This also would require, I guess, some, some future work. And in general, I think this um, algorithmic versus like model-based view like provided by, by these conformal algorithms has many more potential application economics. Uh, for example, this Janosa Kofutrich in Chu paper here is uh, related to causal inference, like parameter inference in, in causal inference problems, um, which got me interested into this. So um, I am... I am actually like uh, trying to submit this paper soon, so I'm happy for any any kind of comment, and I hope I'm I'm in time. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe we should stop the recording.